Yes, I'm doing a review of the 2022 Nissan Rogue, but I'll also explain why this Steinway is on Mount Bachelor. Nissan's Rogue was redesigned in 2021, and when I profiled it, found it was significantly improved over the outgoing model. Your friends and neighbors felt the same. Even in a crazy market, sales were up over 25%. Nissan moved some 185,000 copies, eking out Chevy Equinox and Mazda CX-5 by 10%. That said, Honda delivered over 360,000 CRVs. Toyota cranked out 407,000 RAV4s. It's the most popular passenger vehicle in the US. The reason I'm profiling Rogue again is under here. The naturally aspirated four-cylinder has been replaced by a turbocharged variable compression three-cylinder engine. Now that might seem weird, but horsepower is up by 11%, torque 24%, and fuel economy is better. Win, win, win. That's if it all checks out. Nissan is so proud of this power plant, it offered up footage of the plant in Deckard, Tennessee. The compression ratio swings from 8 to 1 to 14 to 1. Higher turbo boost with a lower compression ratio is best for power. High compression with less boost improves fuel efficiency. You can have your cake and eat it too. Trickle-down economics might be questionable, but tech adaption is a tangible thing in the automotive world. The best way to test this? Time for a road trip. I'm going to Bend, Oregon, which is precisely 333 miles from here. Here's what I'm traveling in, a loaded platinum all-wheel drive model that stickers for $41,900. The nearly $2,300 worth of options include Caspian blue metallic paint with two-tone treatment, an excellent head-up display, and a few lighting add-ons for safety and mood. Platinum offers some nice standard luxury touches, like heated semi-aniline leather seats, both with power, a solid Bose sound system, heated steering wheel, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. A big glass roof, too. All in all, this is a pleasant space to travel in with lots of cut and sewn material plus trim you would swear was from real trees. I'll point out that the interface is fairly rudimentary, but it can be easily customized to make it yours. The Platinum adds navigation and a larger screen. Though Evil Twin is not coming with us, he'd enjoy the roomy rear quarters that have bun warmers and a separate climate control. This might be an expensive vehicle at 42 grand, but feature-wise, it's pushing up against the premium brands. Let's get to that engine. It's a 1.5 liter, 12 valve, turbocharged three cylinder, making 201 horsepower and 225 pound feet of torque, making this the most powerful Rogue ever. Those living at altitude will appreciate the turbo over the outgoing naturally aspirated four cylinder. The new continuously variable transmission has a 17% wider ratio spread, which should help off the line. 32% less internal friction is impressive, but will probably go unappreciated by owners. Simulated manual shifts are convincing. There are a bunch of terrain modes too. These tailor the all-wheel drive system and transmission mapping to make sure you cover all sorts of surfaces efficiently and effectively. The dampers are fixed, nothing adaptive. I've already done the TP trunk test, not going to do it again. Rogue holds a lot of kit, scoring nine packs of the two-ply. Pretty good, that's the same as Honda CRV. And this cargo hold, very flexible. Before I get to that, check this out. A real spare tire, not a lot of vehicles get those these days. And this little spot, good for a gallon of milk, won't slide around. Speaking of sliding, stuff that you put in the trunk will stay put because of this clever divide and hide system. It can be configured a number of different ways to keep stuff out of sight. Also, the floor can be dropped all the way down or positioned higher with storage underneath. This adds a lot of utility. There are luxury crossovers that don't have remote seat releases. Good because it's quite a reach into the deep cargo hold. 
Wish there were 40-20-40 split seats, but at least the floor is completely flat with an impressive 74 cubic feet of cargo capacity. We'll be traveling to Bend with the seats usable, it's just the two of us, that's 36.5 cubes. To visualize that, here's what we're leaving town with. It's only a couple days, but you know how it is. It's easier to overpack when you've got a roomy vehicle. We're doing a little hiking while we're down there. One trek will take us to a concert on the side of Mount Bachelor. Uh, you'll see. Time to get out of Dodge. The bird's eye camera view that's standard on Platinum is excellent. There's cross path braking too, in case you don't see other drivers on your flanks. While the all-wheel drive system is pretty capable, I won't see any off-roading during this trip, so I'll just motor over the chicane to give you some sense of what 8.2 inches of ground clearance can tackle. Rogue is perfectly suitable for cruising forest service roads. From here on, I'm leaving my pro gear behind, switching to a GoPro and my iPhone. Hey, I'm on vacation. Kind of, sort of. All right, time to merge with traffic. That's okay. Zero to 60 takes about eight seconds. RAV4, CRV, and others won't do substantially better. Besides, we immediately run into traffic. I switch on ProPilot Assist. It's great for heavy traffic, following the car ahead to a complete stop and resuming automatically if traffic starts moving before 30 seconds are up. It makes the best of a bad situation. My wife, Mariko, is not a car person, but she's wicked smart and intuitive. You've driven this a little bit. Did you notice anything different about it? No, I didn't. Did I miss something? Okay, this engine is a turbocharged three-cylinder engine. Does, it, <laughs> does that mean anything to you? Not a thing. Okay, well, <laughs> it's unusual. It's a three-cylinder engine. Well, it's felt like a normal car to me. Okay. Um, also, variable compression. How did I miss that? Yeah, well, I know you're very sensitive, so <laughs> the fact that you didn't notice it speaks volumes. <laughs> I didn't notice it. Four cylinders are normal. Six. I mean, our Volvo had a five-cylinder. Usually they have even numbers of cylinders. Ford also offers a three-banger on Bronco Sport and Escape. I notice a slight whirring sound under moderate throttle on this one, something my mics don't pick up. Modico doesn't hear it. Check it on your test drive. But for certain, the powertrain is smooth. Okay, passing power. Actually, not bad. You weren't scared, were you? <laughs> no. Okay. On winding back roads, Mazda CX-5 and VW Tiguan would probably be more fun in the curves. Pushed hard in corners, Rogue has some understeer. Part of road tripping is food. This is a small Pacific Northwest chain, highly recommended if you're visiting my neck of the woods. Good, huh? It's so good. Especially for a turkey burger. I know. It's the garlic aioli. It just really does it. We're very cheap. We bring our own soda. You can never have enough ketchup. And if you're a Tesla owner, they've got you covered. Let me ask you about the seats. Do you find them comfortable? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, Nissan has great seats. They're called zero gravity seats. Curious as to why they're called? I was just going to ask. Yeah, um, so they have studied the shape of the spine in zero gravity, and then that's how these seats support your spine. Oh, well, they feel fine. Yeah, they're pretty good. Power is not an issue with the three-cylinder. The EPA rates fuel economy at 31 miles per gallon average. Nearly all of our miles have been highway at an average of 70 miles an hour. We're well on our way, and the trip computer says 33 miles per gallon, not bad for a vehicle this size. So one thing. Rogue, unlike its competition, is not available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. We both own plug-in hybrids. Your Volt, how many tanks of gas do you buy a year? Uh, two? 
So far this year, I think I've only bought one. Yeah. Yeah. Plug-in hybrids, they rule. I'll do a tank fill test once we hit bends, since I won't need to gas up until then. Between the seats, the pleasant looking cabin, and the raised ride height that people crave these days, this is an easy vehicle to cover distance in. How about comfort? Is this comfortable? Yeah. Ride's good? Very comfortable. Not too loud in the cabin? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Decent for a road trip. Not an awful lot of wind noise, not an awful lot of road noise, not luxury car quiet, but decent. And the windows are nice and big. Yeah, actually visibility is quite good. Yeah, that's nice. Yep. So is the head-up display, very helpful. Rogue Platinum doesn't quite have the polish found in a premium crossover like Lexus NX or Mercedes GLB, but it doesn't have the price tag either. ProPilot Assist isn't as good as General Motors Super Cruise or Tesla Autopilot, but for a mainstream semi-autonomous driving system, it's pretty darn good. You can take your hands off the wheel for about 10 seconds or so before it nags you to put them back on. It stays locked in the lane, takes gentle corners pretty easily. Good system, good for road tripping. It takes around seven hours to get to Bend. I'm anxious to check out the efficiency. The trip computer kept dropping as we went along from 33 miles per gallon to 30. I figured it was pessimistic, but actually it was optimistic. At least there's capless fueling. Taking on just over 13 gallons of dinosaur juice, this is what the math says, which has to be wrong. The tank was probably not filled completely when the car was delivered. A second test needs to happen. We meet up with friends to go kayaking. Bill and Bev own a CRV, perfect for comparing with the Rogue. A nice touch, every door on the Nissan has a lock button, simplifying life when dealing with kids or pets, like Lenny, the Wonder Dog. So, Bill, can I use you as a measurement? Can you hop in the back seat? Absolutely. You're six. You're six one, right? Six one. All right, hop I'm, in. I'm getting shorter as the years go by. Yeah, aren't we all? Yeah, really. All right, how is it? Pretty comfortable, actually. It's, yeah, I could ride here. No problem. There you go. Our work is done here. <laughs> Lenny won't care that the back seats get the zero gravity treatments, but humans will. Door openings are especially wide. Three adults will be well treated in back. There are luxury brands that don't offer these. The center console opening makes it easy for people in the back to access it. Another cool touch, the washer fluid comes from the wipers, kind of a high-end thing. We take Bill's CRV because the kayaks are already loaded. Both it and Rogue take on a lot of stuff. Maybe a three-row SUV isn't needed? I just think it's interesting that people buy these giant SUVs, right? When you can get a bunch of well, stuff. Well, you can in get there. a bunch of stuff in there. Why I mean, not? look. All four of us and Lenny. They've packed two single and one double kayak, plus other stuff like oars and coolers, and we all traveled together fine. We're just missing an electric pump. This is the most exercise I'll get today. No question about that. It's why people have gravitated towards SUVs and crossovers. They haul a lot of stuff and they take people where they want to go. Uh, true, the roads to Lake Polina are paved. All we needed on this trip was a front drive rogue, but nice to know we could have taken a rugged forest service road for more adventures. Lenny is not so much into exploring. He's more of a chiller. We should all have it this rough. I talked about altitude. We're heading to Mount Bachelor Ski Area. At the base, the elevation is around 5,700 feet. Because turbos make their own atmospheric pressure, there's little to no reduction in power. Why a ski resort in summer? Well, there's mountain biking, but we're heading up to a concert. After a scenic ride up the mountain and a half mile trek up a rugged path, there's this, a nine foot Steinway. This is a concert series called In a Landscape, where Hunter Nowak and a dedicated group of volunteers put on performances where you'd least expect them. Mm -hmm. 
The twist is there's no amplification. People wear powerful wireless headphones. So what's really cool is you can walk around, take in nature and still hear the music crystal clear through the headphones. I'm about a quarter mile away from him. These folks are a lot further. And these <laughs> are very, very close. To give you an idea of how remote and steep this location is, the crew damaged the transmission of the truck towing the piano. So yeah, this is in the middle of nowhere. And the sunset was spectacular. I'll linger a bit. Okay, back to the review. It was a great trip. We highly suggest Ben for a getaway. I paid a lot more attention to speed on the return trip to Seattle, averaging around 70 miles an hour. There's a solid amount of elevation change because the Pacific Northwest has a lot of that. I'll also point out that this is a very new vehicle with around 1,700 miles on the clock when we started. On the second fill up on specified standard grade gas, efficiency was much better and close to the EPA average estimate. So as the engine breaks in, things should improve. I'll round it off to 31 miles per gallon. Time to sum this up with red light, green light. Green lights, the new engine and transmission make Rogue a more powerful and refined machine, worth the wait. The platinum trim level elevates this crossover to a premium experience. There's an overall goodness happening. Great seats, nicely trimmed cabin, excellent storage, handsome styling, and ProPilot Assist is an excellent semi-autonomous driving aid when compared to other systems offered by mainstream non-luxury brands. Yellow light? Yes, the Platinum offers a little slice of luxury, but it is nearly 42 grand as tested. The powertrain is significantly better. Listen carefully to see if the whirring sound I heard under moderate throttle gets to you. I didn't quite hit the EPA fuel economy numbers, though again, the engine needs some break-in time. Red light. The interface is clear and configurable, but the look is kind of basic for such a nice vehicle. Something I didn't mention, wireless CarPlay didn't always connect. It was kind of fussy. I'd love to see Rogue produce as a hybrid or plug-in, something that CRV, Escape, and RAV4 offer. But overall, we found the Rogue to be a charmer and a solid road trip machine. Back in the day, when we were raising two kids, the room would have served us well. Nissan might call this rogue, but it's straight up mainstream for family functionality. I'll put a link to the first rogue review I did with the four cylinder if you want to compare. And it was a base SV model, which I found surprisingly pleasant. Special thanks to my friends, Bill and Bev for being part of this story. Same goes for Lenny. A sad footnote, this will be his last video. He lived a rich and full life. We should all be so lucky. And of course, I'll thank the normally camera shy Mariko, who's a good sport. If you find a partner even half as cool as her, consider yourself very lucky. A great co-pilot, a frugal too. She found this place in Madras, Oregon on the way home. Gotta say, these are some of the best tacos I've had anywhere, and I do mean anywhere. Props to the Jimenez family. I learned long ago not to eat on camera. These are amazing, and you can't beat the atmosphere. Hey, there's even shelter from the sun. Sometimes you have to pay less for the very best. These were two bucks a piece, but no credit cards. It's the only advantage this place across the street has. Okay, and Crunch Wrap Supreme, if you like those. Hope you got something out of my look at the 2022 Nissan Rogue and its very unusual powertrain, plus my vacation sprinkled in. If you're looking for a place to go, I highly suggest Bend, Sun River, Mount Bachelor, awesome places. I'll leave you with this fun fact. There are only two states in the US where you can't pump your own gas. One of them is New Jersey and the second is Oregon. I always forget that. It's always awkward when I get out of the car and the attendant looks at me. Uh, this guy thought I was nuts because I wanted to shoot him, you know, filling up because it was part of the story. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, but man. apparently it's due to safety. Uh, I know I've been injured dozens of times pumping my own gas. So thank you very much, Oregon. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Um, thanks for watching. 
Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, you're still here, so I'm assuming that you enjoyed it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm very active there, and you can ask me a question there, or you can do it here in the comments. You know, I'll try to get back to you. But, you know, there are so many people now, but I do my best. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk, and I'm going back on vacation. All right, we're leaving the concert, and I will leave you with this moment of zen. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm not talking about the girl. <laughs>